there's a showing where the shot was gone. Chill. The cooler that tumbled out of a pickup and onto the hood of your car. If you're a football fan, eventually we're gonna meet. So get all state. Our agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> Let me. Are you in good hands? Contact your local all state agent, Stephanie A. Bear, in Homa at 985-872-0201 or at stephanieabear.com. Locally owned and operated in Thibodeau, Divinity Home Health Services provides skilled nursing, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, aides, and medical social workers. Their staff are seasoned health care professionals who have come together to provide their patients with an unparalleled quality of care in the comfort of their home. Divinity was recognized nationwide as a 2014 Top 500 Home Care Agency by Decision Health and National Research Corporations. Choose quality. Choose Divinity. Your home for the Colonels, 100.3 FM, KLRZ, La Rose, New Orleans, and the River Region, and 1600 AM, KLEB, Golden Meadow. It's time for Colonel Football on 100.3 FM, <laughs> ESPN, New Orleans. Uh, With the speed, it's on to 24 first down, it might be over. Good evening from Stouffer Gymnasium, home of Nichols Colonels men's basketball. Louisiana's in town tonight, and this is the only ticket in town. Sunbelt Southland Conference, only one game in the Southland. Nobody else is playing in the Sunbelt. Great opportunity for the Colonels and Cajuns to show what they're made of in this 2017-2018 season. Bob Marlin has another fast-paced, impressive team that will Make that 90-mile trip from Lafayette, first time since 1971. Colonels have hosted Louisiana and an opportunity to show off what Richie Riley has built in year two of his head coaching stint with the Colonels. Nichols, four and three on the season. They've got a couple Division I wins. They beat Presbyterian. Road win to open the season against UTRGV. Two-game winning streak for Louisiana. They're five and two on the season. Only a road loss to Ole Miss and then a neutral loss against Wyoming. Other than that, Bob Marlin and his Cajuns, they have cruised to five victories this season. They beat McNeese three nights ago, 89-78 to in Lafayette. Game was uh, much more comfortable than that final margin may have indicated. Louisiana bringing in one of the highest octane offenses in the country. They will compete well against the Colonels, who are number five in the nation in scoring. We'll hear from Richie Riley. He is 17 and 20 in his two seasons with Nichols, four and three this year. Coach Riley up next on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
whole host of categories, Colonel Men's Basketball. Home against UL with a 4-3 and three record. Big opportunity for Richie Riley and Nichols to play two of the best mid-major teams in the country. Coach, you've got the Raging Cajuns tonight. Idaho on Sunday. How big of a statement could this weekend be for the Colonels? Yeah, it is. We kind of set it up this way, you know, intentionally because we wanted to challenge our team. The only way to get ready for Southland Conference play and, and playing a tough conference slate is, is to play people in the non-conference and you know, we were fortunate enough to get two really, really good teams to be able to come here to Stouffer and gives us a chance at home to be able to play two two quality teams that each have a great chance to win their to win their league and go to an NCAA tournament. Louisiana is, is five and two on the year. They finished in third place in the Cayman Islands invite, had a nice win over Iowa, another impressive win against Richmond. When you look at this team on tape, they want to play fast, but how does that affect your style? It does. You know, we want to play fast. They want to play fast. Um, they're a little bit different than us. They play two more traditional post guys where we, for the most part, only play one post and four perimeter guys. So we, we play fast a little bit differently. But, you know, what really separates them on film is the way they rebound the ball. And their experience, they're old like us. You know, they're old. They set out three guys last year, three high major transfers that are very talented and, you know, returned a couple all-league performers. So... I mean, they're as talented as a group that that we've seen outside of Villanova. I mean, there's, they're right up there as Western Kentucky as far as talent. And, you know, and they, when you look at their games, Ole Miss, they led for a lot of the game. And then you look at the other loss that they had, Wyoming, a really good team. And it's kind of the middle game of that tournament. And, you know, it, sometimes it happens like that. But they're good. They're good. They're as good a team as, as we've seen all year outside of Villanova. It's Richie Riley and Colonel Men's Basketball. You mentioned their three high major transfers that had to sit out last season. You've been able to transform your team with, with players who have arrived after visiting another program but committing to the Colonels for the rest of their career. When you look at creating chemistry, it takes time. Your team is now finding their themselves and, and their chemistry with one another. It take us inside that factor, bringing in a player from another program, but then having them unite with the rest of the team. It does. It's a work in progress, and we knew it would be like that. When you bring in nine new guys and, you know, a lot of guys have played at high major programs or came from junior colleges or, I mean, we start a kid that's a freshman, he's 18 years old. So um, we, we're a work in progress right now, and the goal is to use this non-conference slate um, to Hey, Brian. We want to win, so, but. You know we don't have a, a basketball intro like that. That's the only one that you had. percent and our guy. But uh, like when we started this show, I know it came up football. That's why I shut it down in January. You mentioned Kevin Johnson, your, your freshman from Thibodeau, Louisiana, who can play with anybody. And that's what we're finding out about his skill set the first couple weeks of the season. When you have a player like Roddy Peters that was a, a five-star out of high school, went to Maryland, Southern Conference Freshman of the Year and Tavon Sadler. Not to say that Kevin Johnson hasn't played with great players before, but how are you asking some of your veterans who've done it all, seen it all, to kind of be a leader with Kevin and, and help his development? Yeah, the big thing, you know, I got on there guys the other day in practice, they kept pushing him down, like wouldn't let him use a ball screen, like making him cut, like not pushing him physically, but making him cut so he couldn't use a ball screen. I told him he's as good at using a ball screen as any of you guys. And his confidence continues to grow. And I was honest with our team the other night, you know, after the, the Blue Mountain game, I wasn't pleased with our play. You know, we won, but I wasn't pleased with how we played. And, I told our team, I pointed at Kevin, I said, this, this little dude right here, I had zero expectations for him to play as an 18-year-old freshman. I knew he would be a great player in our program. I knew he would be, you know, I felt like as a sophomore, junior, senior. But I told him, I said, he's, he's came and taken minutes. Not only taken minutes, but he's become a starter. And it's just a tribute to his work ethic and, you know, him having the right things. He just has a lot of winning in it. He just does. And makes winning plays, he makes smart plays, and he just makes our team better every second that he's out there on the court, flies out there live. Got another freshman in, in Raji Lyons who, who might, down the road, have a similar story to Kevin Johnson. He, he's taken minutes from other players. We haven't seen him a, a part of that top two rotation and, and played big minutes, but that, that seems to be changing. What's the forecast for Raji moving forward? Yeah, he could tonight. You know, he's had an outstanding week of practice. He played well in the Blue Mountain game when he got in. I left him out there for 12 straight minutes just because I wanted his conditioning to, to, you know, feel a real game action. And, you know, it's the first time he had done that. And, you know, he's he's going to play tonight. You know, I plan on, you know, playing a lot of guys. And I think he has a role in this game and can really help us. And, 
you know, how much, I don't know, but I think you're right. Down the stretch, I think he's a guy that can really, really help this team as a freshman. And, and the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he's got more potential than, as, as much potential as any kid I've ever coached. Rounding out our conversation with Richie Riley and Nichols men's basketball, you all took care of business in their building last year. But when you look at how your team has changed, how your team has evolved, great test against a team that likes to score points, but not as deep as the Colonels have been this season. If you're a part of that second rotation for Nichols or, or a part of your starters with their second time on the floor, they're probably going to be playing some Cadesons who haven't left. How do they take advantage of that depth and those opportunities in those second or third runs in the rotation? Yeah, we got to do a good job imposing our will and speeding the game up. You know, we got to speed the game up from the tip. We can't wait until you know the 10 minute mark or so, or, or what you're talking about doesn't take place. You know, the way that we play, it's got to wear on your legs, and it's got to, you know, when you play eight guys, they got to pay. You know, if they're only going to play eight, and we're going to play 10 or 11, and, and we're going to play this frantic pace, then they they've got to pay and that's, that's what we're able to do you know a couple times early in the year we need to get back to doing that tonight uh, we've got Quay back who will help you know he's obviously a guy that helps with our tempo and our pace and defensively but we've got to be able to to turn it into that type of game you know everybody, everybody talks about stops stops and playing more defense you know part of part of how we guard is why we we're fifth in the country in points we, we create a lot of possessions and you know, I don't care how good you are defensively, and there's 90 to 100 possessions, there'll be some points scored. So, you know, we do need more stops, but more than anything, we need more turnovers. We've got to turn them over tonight. I think it's important. Stroman's a guy. He can either be a high assist guy, but, you know, sometimes he's high risk, high reward. He'll turn it over some. We've got to, we've got to get the ladder. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Richie Riley, Nichols Men's Basketball, Cajuns and the Colonels, after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Who doesn't want to sleep like a baby? It's what everyone wants when traveling on business. When stay We are courtside with the Colonels. Nichols at home for their first Division I non-conference opportunity. They've had their way with a couple Division II programs, a 104-68 win against Blue Mountain College on Monday. And we have seen the Colonels expand their depth and then try to return to a rotation that sparked them to a 111-106 win against UTRGV in the season opener. Here's what's changed since that first game of the season three and a half weeks ago. You've lost Zaquavian Smith, but now you get him back. Zaquavian missed three straight games for the Colonels, was not a part of the trip to Baltimore. His return couldn't come at a better time because of how this team has expanded their depth in his absence. Raji Lyons thought he might redshirt this season. Freshman out of New Orleans is now expected to get minutes this evening. And with Maurice O'Field still out with the MCL sprain, looks like Colonels might get him back for the December 18th matchup at Tulane. There's an opening for Raji Lyons. He's only played in three games this season, but he's really impressed Coach Riley during those short 22 minutes on the court. And that could be a big boost for Legend Roberton. Legend is tied for the conference lead in blocks, and he's only playing 15 minutes a game. Seven footer does not have a lot of big support behind him. You've got Mauricio Field who is unavailable tonight. He's back in the mix in a couple weeks. That means Daniel Regis. They're your only power forwards that can add some size to the equation. Colonels will play small, they'll play fast, and we'll find out firsthand how this will be an effective tool against a Raging Cajun team that can run, but they can really cut you up in the half court set. Bryce Washington has to be licking his chops at the opportunity 
to play a, a smaller, quick team that struggles defensively in the half court set. Colonels do not want Bryce Washington and Jonathan Stove and Justin Miller to be able to assert their size in the inside and let Frank Bartley, Malik Marchetti, Cedric Russell, P.J. Hardy, if those guys are getting open shots, could be a long night. UL has been consistent in their approach without Jonathan Stowe, but now they have him back in the equation. And the timing for Stowe's return couldn't be better for Bob Marlin. Changes made with Louisiana following their win against McNeese. Marcus Stroman has had a hip and an ankle injury to deal with. He will not be in the starting lineup this evening. It's Malik Marchetti, Frank Bartley, Jakeen and Gant, Jonathan Stone, and Bryce Washington for Louisiana. Nichols will turn to Tavon Sadler, Javon Powell, Roddy Peters, Kevin Johnson, and Kimani Jackson. Cajuns are 5-2 on the season. They're led by Bob Marlin. It has been a long time since we saw Coach Marlin back in this building. 2010, he had an incredible 14-2 Sam Houston team, 14-2 in the Southland Conference. They made the NCAA tournament. They eked out a 75-69 win against the Colonels in 2010. Bob Marlin in his 25th year, he won over 200 games with Sam Houston. He's got 133 and 106 at Louisiana. It's Jakeen and Gant and Kimani Jackson for the tip. Jackson wins it, but he loses the ball right to Bryce Washington, who snares it and scores five seconds in. Bryce Washington buckets. It's all the senior from New Orleans does. Curlins will try to counter, but Washington steals it from Peters. Chance to run for Malik Marchetti. Bounces it to the block, Bryce Washington against Kimani Jackson. An ISO on the right block, two dribbles, a post fade, and a long one-handed flip off the backboard. Sadler has the rebound. Colonels in possession, trailing by two. Stop and pop from 17 feet, off the back rim by Sadler. Free throw line rebound for Bryce Washington. He'll handle the rock, outlet into the left corner. Deep jumper is off the left of the rim by Frank Bartley. Rebounded by Javon Powell. Hope you enjoy this pace. Get ready for 40 straight minutes of run and gun basketball. Javon Powell into the left corner where Johnson shoots a three over Bartley and sinks it. Two freshman at Thibodeau, Louisiana. Three to two nickels. Colonels are making 14 threes a game. They hit their first of the night against the one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Stove drops it off. Right block layup, Bryce Washington. Jonathan Stove, senior from Baton Rouge. Washington has the first four for Louisiana. They're up one. Sadler loses his dribble and finds his point guard, Roddy Peters. Senior from D.C. gives it to Powell. Deep right arc three is off right. Rebound into the paint by Malik Marchetti. USC transfer. Up the floor to the left corner. Bartley runs into two defenders and draws the block against Jackson. Three throws for the Raging Cajuns with 90 seconds off the clock. Lower section packed with Colonel fans and plenty of Cajuns as we welcome you to our Friday night broadcast of Nichols and Louisiana. Two free throws for Frank Bartley. BYU transfer just gets better and better. You wonder if Dave Rose is sitting back in the West Coast Conference and regretting some of the changes that he made. Bartley played more of a power forward role when he was in Provo. 15 points, three rebounds, couple assists per game this season, and he'll make the first free throw attempt, 5-3 to three Louisiana. Bartley wanted to come home, wanted to play off guard. He'll still post you up. He opened the game against McNeese with a nice post move from the left block. 6-3, 2-15, but he goes one of two from the line. Peters has the rebound. Colonel ball down by two. Roddy Peters finds Sadler. Now back to Peters at the point. Screen set by Jackson, who slips it. Good defense in the inside by Marchetti. And now it's Sadler. Off balance, but effective. A left lane fade, and he kisses it home. We're tied at five. Full court pressure with Sadler anchoring it. Jakeen and Gant. Big man who can handle the rock, and that's the similar story for both Washington and Gant. They can help out against this press. Malik Marchetti. A post feed from the left wing to the left block. It's tipped away and stolen by Sadler. Colonels can take their first lead. Peters floats it up and in from the left lane. Ronnie Peters, his first two of the night, seven to five nickels. Jonathan Stove will be your primary ball handler without the services of Marcus Stroman. 6'4", 220-pound guard, playing more off guard and small forward. He'll initiate the offense. 
And now he'll post up, Cats left block, late double, kick out to the point, low pass. And the Cajuns will have to reset in the right block. Washington rumbles into two defenders and scores. Big boy basket, Bryce Washington. Ties the game at seven using that 255 frame, five thumb frame. And now Nichols, they'll have a sideline inbound with the game knotted up at seven. And Javon Powell, Kimani Jackson, Roddy Peters, Javon Sadler, and KJ ready to get this inbound in. Curling and catching at the right arc is Powell. Screen set by Jackson, released to the wing right. Peters, he'll post up Jackson. Right block attack into Gant. Pivot baseline, and he draws the foul. Strong move against Jakeen and Gant. Three minutes into the game, Colonels will shoot free throws. Nichols is averaging 96 points per game. Louisiana's at 88 points per contest. Cajuns put up 102 exactly one year ago against Nichols. Jamani Jackson, one of the most efficient scorers in the country, shooting 83% from the floor, and he will make his first free throw attempt of the night. Only his 10th free throw attempt of the season, he's 6 for 10. Cajuns won that game 102 to 69, and it was probably the best atmosphere Nichols played in all of last season. Cajuns were debuting their $22 million renovation of the Cajun Dome. Jumped out to an early lead and never gave it up. Kimani misses the second free throw. Free throw line rebound for Frank Bartley. Colonels have an 8 to 7 lead. Raging Cajun possession in the right front court. We'll see an assortment of Raging Cajuns running the point. It's Marchetti and Stove. They open the offense with a straightaway give. Marchetti to the left dark where they post up Washington. Back out the stove, top of the key three. It's off the back rim. Three Colonels chase the rebound. They can't save it. Underneath the hoop, Gant comes up with it, finds Washington. Baby hook is missed. Gant comes up with it, seizes control, and draws the foul. And legend Will Burton will be requested. Coach Riley will ask his seven-footer to stop the bleeding in the interior. Come up with some rebounds, and that'll be the tough test for Nichols this evening. Louisiana is one of the best rebounding teams in the Sun Belt, if not the country. And they've got the game tied up at eight as Jaquin and Gant makes the free throw. Louisiana led the Sun Belt in rebounding margin last season, and they are on pace to do it again this year. They're plus three and a half each ninth. And with the game tied at eight, Louisiana will retake the lead off the second made free throw by Jakeen and Gant. Nine to eight, Colonels trailing as legend Will Burton will join Sadler, Johnson, Peters, and Powell. On ball pick and roll approaching for Sadler, but he'll pull up, shoot the long jumper, and swish it. Put it on the line, but Trayvon Sadler has given the Colonels a 10 to nine advantage. Midcourt inbound to Bryce Washington, and you have to admire his skill set. Runs into a double team, frees himself, passes to the right corner for a pull up that Marchetti hits. 11 to 10, Cajuns are back on top, and now they almost steal the inbound. Colonels are lucky to get past midcourt with Peters and avoiding some traffic and turmoil. Roddy Peters trying to slow his roll as he passes wing right to an attacking Sadler. He gets to the rim, off balance shot off the backboard. It's saved by Gant, and Louisiana will run with it. Two on two, but no one stops. Stove was a finger and a finish. Goal tending on the Colonels, and a 13 to 10 lead for the Legion Cajuns. Jonathan Stove, he missed five games, but his re-arrival into this starting lineup is changing the pace, changing the pressure that Louisiana is able to offer. They have a 13 to 10 lead after the first media timeout from Thibodeau. Colonel possession when we return on the Colonel Sports Radio Network.
medicine provider for Nicholas Athletics. 13 to 10, Louisiana with an early three-point lead, but Nichols has had no issue finding offensive success. They're four of seven from the floor. Sadler, Roberton, Rutledge, Powell, and Kevin Johnson for the Colonels, and Sadler already attacking the free throw line. Floats it from 10 and leaves it long. Pulling down the rebound off the right rim is Bryce Washington. And he's owning this game in the first five minutes for Louisiana. Washington into the front court. P.J. Hardy is in for Louisiana, but it's Washington isoing and attacking off the glass and long. Rebound lost by Sadler. Washington tracks down his own miss in the right corner. Saves it to Steve, who dunks on everybody. And one on the finish, and that's against the number one shot blocker in the Southland Conference. 15 to 10, Louisiana. Stowe to the free throw line. He's 6'4", 220 pounds. And he had three offers coming out of high school. It was Southern, UNO, and UL. Jonathan Stove making the most of his Sun Belt opportunity. Senior season. And he is giving the Cajuns a five-point advantage and cannot tack on to that lead. He misses the free throw. Powell has it for the Colonels. Up the floor to Sadler. Left block spinning to the paint. Wrap around low up no, but the foul against UL. Jakeen and Gant couldn't resist the urge to Smacked the right arm of Sadler. Two free throws for the senior transfer from UNC Greensboro. Colonels are spreading the wealth on offense through the first five plus minutes of this game. Sadler has a bucket, so does Peters. Kevin Johnson hit a three to open the game. Javon Powell, Kamani Jackson, Roberton, Rutledge. They're still trying to find their role tonight as Sadler's free throws off the back rim. Lafayette Rutledge, you know it's all or nothing. He has had three of the best shooting performances of any player in the country this season. He's number two in the nation in made three-point field goals, but most of those are in three games. Rutledge is in along with Peters, Sadler, Zaquavian Smith. And with Sadler approaching free throw number two, he'll miss it, but a lane violation on UL. One more opportunity for Sadler. Legend Roberton is the fifth on the floor for the Colonels. It's Stove, Hardy, Justin Miller just stepped in for UL. Bryce Washington still in the game. Malik Marchetti, he'll remain on the floor as Sadler sinks the second attempt, his third attempt, making the most of the lane violation, and the Colonels are within four. 15 to 11, UL. They anticipate the full court pressure. It's Washington trapped on the left sideline, loses his dribble. Great defense by Smith and Sadler. And locating Justin Miller on the left sideline, where an immediate double team awaits him. Back to the high arc where it swung to the right block. Stove into the double team. It's taken away by Sadler. Steal by the Colonels. And out with the Rutledge. He wanted to pull the trigger on a left arc three. Instead gives it to Peters. His crossover leads to a carry. And the Colonels hand the ball right back to UL as Roddy Peters loses possession. Turnover for Nichols with 14-23 to play in the first half. Sadler, Rutledge, Smith, and Peters. They're in the backcourt looking for a turnover. Legend Roberton, he'll protect the rim. Left sideline, Washington. Keeps it back to the head of the arc. Backing away from the traffic is Jonathan Stove. Six early points for Washington, four for Stove. And a left arc pick and roll approaching for Stove. Curls to the right lane, leaves his feet, loses the ball, saved by Washington momentarily. Taken by Smith, three on one to Rutledge for a left wing pull up three. And the first three of the season for Lafayette Rutledge, 15 to 14, Louisiana. 31 threes in eight games. Louisiana wastes no time cutting up the Colonel defense and drawing a foul, a left to right rim run. Legend Will Burden, a couple quick fouls, and P.J. Hardy will get free throws. Two minutes, two fouls for Roberton. And Richie Riley will look down to Kimani Jackson and ask him to get back into the game and help stop this Louisiana secondary break. They have not been bothered by the Colonel's 1-2-2 full court pressure. Hardy will miss his first free throw attempt, and the Cajuns will maintain a one-point advantage. Louisiana, three of six from the free throw line. Hardy, one of two 
Only his third and fourth free throw attempts of the season. He's now two for four from the line in the 2018 year. 16 to 14 Cajuns. Zaquavian Smith, it's been a couple weeks since he played with the Colonels. Passes it straight away to Rutledge, and he'll clear out to get some space on Jonathan Stowe. A give to the high arc to Sadler. Now back to the wing right where a pull up three is off left by Smith. Left block rebound by the Raging Cajuns. Great outlet from Marchetti to the left corner. Hardy's three is long. Jackson has the rebound in the paint. He'll start the fast break. Deep right corner to Smith. Thinks about the three, instead finds a slashing. Sadler has it ripped away. Miller has a two on two. To Stobu, jump stops, gets fouled, and he'll have three throws on a high hit by Lafayette Rutledge. Cajun coaches are requesting a flagrant foul, and that's when it does not pay to be the smallest man on the court. Lafayette Rutledge, he was shoulder level, reached up to Stobu, who has about six and a half inches on him. And the officials will run over to the monitor and review to see if Lafayette Rutledge did reach up and pull down Stove on his attempt in the paint. Richie Riley displeased with the information being passed on to him from KB Burdett, Marcus Pettigrew, and Brent Dugas, our three officials in tonight's game. Well, Lafayette Rutledge, the optics were bad. Reached up, Stove has already posterized a couple kernels on one of his earlier dunks. And with the way college basketball has been officiated in the first month of the season, would not be surprised if this will be a flagrant one for Louisiana. But we'll see how it plays out with the Cajuns protecting an early two-point lead. Both teams have relied on some major transfers to bolster their 2018 seasons. Louisiana has turned to Marcus Stroman, Jakeenan Gant, Malik Marchetti. That's a South Carolina, Missouri, and USC transfer. And the Colonels' top two scorers, Roddy Peters, a Maryland slash South Florida transfer. Avon Sadler, he was the Southern Conference Rookie of the Year when he was with UNC Greensboro. They've been pacing the Colonels through the first seven games of the season. And then you have legend Will Burden. He leads the conference in blocks. He transferred in from Clemson. You have all of those players together with a couple of junior college transfers. A couple more high major transfers in Kamani Jackson, Mariso Fields, Stevie Repahowski transferred here last year from Tulsa. Every year, it, it's all that matters in college basketball, college football. Transfers are increasing, graduate transfers also on the rise. You have to make the most of every single season and not worry who you have next year. And Richie Riley is being told that a flagrant one has been assessed and did not want an explanation. Officials tried to provide one to Coach Riley, and he just pivoted away and said, don't want to hear it. <laughs> Shoot the free throws, get on with it. 16-14, Cajuns, two-point lead, 13-03 to play in the first half. And Jonathan Stove with the paint cleared out. He was ready to take those two attempts, and now we'll reconvene at the free throw line. Big opportunity early in the game for the Cajuns to make this a two-possession game. They get a couple more free throws. 13-0-3 left in half number one, and Richie Riley displeased with the delay. Go, go, go. Justin Miller, he will sub out from Stove. Stove will head to midcourt and watch Miller shoot these free throws. Big man with a touch. Lefty from Owensboro, Kentucky. He's ready to tee up a couple free throws. And more clarification before we actually get this show on the road. Ah, the administrative side of college basketball. Louisiana taking advantage of five early fouls on the Colonels. Five fouls in the first seven minutes and 57 seconds. And we have seen teams feast from the free throw line against Nichols in this 2017-2018 season. But since it was in the act of shooting, you'll get the flagrant administered to Stove. He'll get the free throws. UL will have the ball. Stove, attempt number one, makes it. Stove's averaging 14 points, three rebounds, and an assist. But he's only played in a couple games. Played in the opener. Had to deal with some lingering ankle injuries. Had a, a heel, an ankle injury, missed five straight. Came back and scored 11 points against McNeese, and he will make both free throws. Jonathan Stove up to six points 
in six minutes. Washington on the right baseline inbound. He gives it to Stove, who scores a four-point possession for Jonathan Stove. 20 to 14, Raging Cajuns. Biggest deficit of the first half for Nichols. They'll run their high octane four out, one in motion offense. Rutledge over to Sadler. On ball pick set by Jackson. Pass to Peters left arm. He has not looked for his shot early in this game. Now he runs to the rim, runs into two defenders and gets the foul. Stove and Washington tried to collapse, but Stove reaches in. He'll pick up his first foul. Roddy Peters has made a living off of this approach in the 2018 season. Patient to start, get your teammates involved, and then take over. And after first month of the season, Roddy Peters would be the Southland Conference MVP. He'll make the first free throw. Colonels are within five. There, there is no way to argue the level of, of dominance we have seen from this 6'4", 195-pound senior from the district. Roddy grew up in D.C., went to Maryland for a year, started 10 games for Mark Turgeon. 20 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. His averages have been incredible this year, and he'll make both free throws. Four-point lead for the Raging Cajuns. They're up 20-16. to 16. Washington handling the rock on the inbound. Throws it away. Peters with the steal in midcourt. Two on one as the Colonels pass to KJ. Pull up from 18 on the left angle. It's off the rim right. And a right block rebound for Jonathan Stove. 10 to 5 advantage for the Cajuns off the glass. Big rebounding boost early in this game as Sadler kicks the ball in the right corner. It's out of bounds off of the foot of the Nichols senior guard. Right baseline inbound for Bryce Washington. Finds Stove in the right corner. Jacarius Davis just came in for the first time tonight for the Cajuns. They slip it to the right block, and Miller gets free throws as Jackson left his feet, hacked down on the hands. Couple freebies for UL with the Colonels trailing by four. Jerikas Davis does not see a lot of floor time for the Cajuns, and neither does Raji Lyons, but that's why you keep working every day in practice and seize these opportunities. Lyons is ready to come in. Jacarius Davis setting things up for Miller, who gets the free throws. Never know when coach calls your number. And off the miss by Miller, we'll see Raji enter as Jackson exits. Only three games this season for Raji. The bulk of his 22 minutes were against a couple Division II opponents. Cedric Russell, freshman from Alexandria, he replaces Washington. Bryce Washington. He's been playing five less minutes per game this season, but he plays the first eight minutes. Played about 34 minutes a game last year, only 29 this year. That's all they need from him is Miller misses both free throws. Second one is short. Roddy Peters has the rebound for Nichols. Four-point deficit for the Colonels. Rutledge wing right as Lyons catches straight away. Pass to Peters left arc. On-ball pick and roll going under is Stove, that allows Peters to float from the right elbow. He misses long, and then Lyons goes over the back on Miller. Media timeout with 11.50 to play in half number one, and we will have free throws for UL when we return to Thibodeau. Seven fouls in the first eight minutes of this game for the Colonels, and now the Louisiana Raging Cajuns shooting 70% from the free throw line this season, operating with a four-point lead early in this game. Colonels living dangerously for the final 12 minutes of the half with foul trouble, sinking the early optimism for this Colonel club. We'll see how Nichols handles that reality moving forward. 11.50 to play in the opening half. 20 to 16 Cajuns on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Otari coaches, first in safety, first.
21 to 18. Louisiana on top by three. One made free throw for Justin Miller, but off the miss, Roddy Peters took it the length of the floor, scored on a floater from the left lane. Three point deficit for the Colonels with Miller and Russell working up high. Pass wing left to Bartley. On ball pick and roll set by Miller. Great jump pass to the left block. Finding Miller who misses once and twice, but Bartley gets the board, then loses control into the right block. Kevin Johnson, he's fouled with 11 minutes to play in half number one. And the Raging Cajuns up to five team fouls as they change the look of their offense. They'll put Cedric Russell into the game along with Justin Miller, Frank Bartley. Some size up front as Jonathan Stowe will go back to that off guard role. Jarekas Davis, also a rare opportunity to match up against the size of the Colonels. Nichols, great pass, top of the key to the right block from Lyons to Sadler. He can't finish, and now UL can run, but Miller encounters Lyons, who held his ground, took the charge. Raji Lyons doing a little bit of everything for the Colonels in his first minute in the game. He forces the turnover, and that's the first foul on Miller. Nichols will get free throws for the duration of half number one. 10.46 to play in the first half. 21 to 18 Cajuns. Colonels are shooting just under 50% from the floor, but Louisiana already plus six on the glass. They've got a 14 to eight rebounding advantage. Great feed from Lions for the left block bucket by Roddy Peters. And this is why Raji Lions is in the game. Big man with a unique skill set. Great find to make it 21 to 20. Cajuns on top by one. Stove. Great feed and he'll dunk it on the right block. Clearing out of the paint was Jerikas Davis. No foul called. Stove up to 10 points and a couple impressive jams. Colonels trail by three. Sadler backed into the left block, but Stowe forces the kick to the point. Peters isos and attacks to the right block, floats it off the glass long. Lyons saves the rebound, and it'll be Colonel possession. Last tipped in the corner by Russell. The athleticism of Raji Lyons. Two nice passes from the high post. Tracks down a loose ball, and the Colonels will get a left sideline inbound. Peters is in front of Coach Bob Marlin on the UL sideline. He gets the inbound into Sadler. Now retakes control of the rock. Rutledge off ball right. Lions catches straight away. Back to the basket. He slips it off to Sadler. Stokes switches. He's now against Sadler. Colonels try a deep post feed, but Jerikas Davis swipes it away. Johnson saves it. Kevin Johnson retakes control for the Colonels. Finds Sadler who buries a left back three. The steal and assist by Johnson and a three by Tavon Sadler to tie the game at 23. Tavon had missed seven straight threes over the last four games, but he ties it up at 23. UL. Wing to the right, deep right corner. Jerikas Davis for three, misses it long. Rebounded by Peters at the free throw line. Colonels are ready to take the lead. Peters one on four, a quick crossover. His floater is long, but he gets the block against UL. Free throws for Peters and Cedric Russell. He picks up the foul and the pain. Stayed on the ground and took a knee from Roddy Peters. But he was out of position, and Peters will get his third and fourth free throws of the half, and that's two quick fouls on Russell. Daniel Regis is ready to check in for the Colonels as Peters offers and misses his first attempt. Number 23 trying to get the Colonels off of points number 23. We're tied with 9.13 to play in the first half. Roddy Peters took his time to try and find his offense early in this game. But he's up to eight points, couple rebounds, couple steals. Wipes his right hand on the side of his trunks and makes the second free throw. Colonels in their home whites tonight with Nichols in red and a black outline across the front of the Adidas jerseys. Raging Cajuns, road red with Raging Cajun in white across the front of their jerseys and the checkered red and White trim on the side of the short side of the jerseys. 24-23, Colonels enjoying a one-point lead. P.J. Hardy killed the Colonels last year from the outside. He passes the stove. Tough left angle jumpers long. Powell with the right block rebound for Nichols. Deep outlet right sideline to Kevin Johnson. He hits a trailing Sadler at the point. Crossover, Stove gets cut up, and Sadler draws the foul. 
highlight reel crossover. Tavon Sadler. And Stove, you gotta wipe your sneakers after that blow by. Hey, Jarvis Stove has already posterized a couple kernels with one of his dunks tonight. And you can say the floor is slippery, that your sneakers gave way. But Tavon Sadler, he's done that a couple times this season with his ball handling. Sadler releases and makes the free throw attempt. 25 to 23 nickels. A lot of free throws in the first 12 minutes of this game. Louisiana's attempted 13 nickels. They're six for nine. Cajuns have missed six of their free throw attempts. Sadler one for two. Right block board for Louisiana. Bryce Washington outlets it left sideline to P.J. Hardy. He's ready for the trap. Gets out of it in the left corner. Bartley deep jump over Regis. He makes it a wet tied at 25. Frank Bartley, newcomer of the year in the Sun Belt Conference last season. Colonels try to counter. Left lane give from Sadler to Regis. He goes up, misses the shot. Great defense by Bryce Washington, and he sees his control of the glass. Washington on the give and a quick push for P.J. Hardy. Sophomore from Lake Charles backs away to midcourt. Locates Washington at the head of the arc. Now left wing with Bartley. Quick trigger three. It's off right. Rutledge stays on the ground and gets the rebound. Colonel's looking to take the lead. Eight minutes to play in the first half. Sadler leaves his feet at the right wing. Gets it back to the left arc to Powell. Quick give at the head of the arc to Kevin Johnson. Now to Sadler. Drives left. Low dribble. Can't attack, and he finds Powell who will. And a back to the basket reach in on UL. It'll provide free throws for the Colonels when we return to Thibodeau. Both teams in the bonus with 7.47 to play in the first half. Double bonus for the Colonels from here on out. Already nine fouls on UL. Hey, 23 free throws between these two teams. Both clubs are shooting above 40%. And the Colonels have erased a six-point deficit. They have the game tied with 7.47 on the clock. 25-25, under eight minutes to play in the first half from Stouffer Gym on ESPN Radio New Orleans. at the line, number two, Colonels and Cajuns tied up with 7.47 to play in half number one. And Nichols making the most of their free throw opportunities. Javon Powell sinks the first, 26 to 25. Nichols, first point of the game for the point guard from Tallahassee, Florida. And he goes two for two. Powell spent all of last season above 90% from the line. You love to see him get to the stripe as much as possible. Colonel's on top by two, but Bartley trying to change the game. He attacks wildly, loses the ball. Washington seizes it. His secondary shot is contested. Saved to Bartley. Left corner three is long, and Sadler jumps up for the right block rebound for Nichols. Two-point lead for the Colonels. Sadler using a slash screen by Regis. Jump stop into the paint, but he kicks to Rutledge, who's fouled on a deep left arc three. Three free throws for Lafayette Rutledge. And this is a different Colonel men's basketball team than the one we saw a couple weeks ago. Villanova, Western Kentucky. Nichols started to find their form in the second half against WKU. They outscored Western Kentucky 54 to 38 in the second half. Western Kentucky still won 186, but it gave you an idea of what this team was capable of. Rutledge off the back rim in his first free throw attempt. And Western Kentucky has looked incredible since that game. They're 5-2 and two on the year, but they beat a top 25 Purdue team. Then they beat SMU. Rutledge, second free throw attempt, swishes it. How many threes will Lafayette Rutledge have hit 
by the conclusion of this season. Steph Curry hit almost 200 in a single season at Davidson. I, I don't think you're going to threaten that mark. But 31 threes through seven-plus games for Rutledge. He's made one tonight, and he goes two for three from the free throw line. 29-25, Nichols with the lead. 7.25 left in the first half. More full court pressure for the Colonels. Off the make, and Washington throws it away. Diagonal from about 40 feet, but he launches it into the first row near midcourt. And we'll have Colonel possession with 7.20 on the clock. Turnovers starting to mount for UL. They have six in the first 12 minutes of this game. Colonels will keep Raji Lyons in along with Rutledge, Sadler, Powell, and Kevin Johnson. A couple true freshmen in for the Colonels against the number 12 mid-major team in the country. Iso for Sadler. Heads to the left, bounce pass to Lyons. One dribble into a double team. Wrap around to Rutledge. Right wing to the right corner. Back to Rutledge. Open. Right wing three. Off left. Lyons tips it to Sadler. Pump back and wrap around layup. No. Sadler. Another try. Yes. 21-25 Colonels. And a tip at midcourt. Putting his life on the line for the tip. They'll stay with you all. But this is the effort Richie Riley loves to see. Siobhan Powell, a headfirst dive into the floor and the LED sign that neighbors midcourt. And this is how depth can be the difference. If you can get this type of relentless pursuit of the ball and you play 90 feet up and down the floor, you will test teams night in and night out. Cedric Russell. He will take over point guard responsibilities for the Raging Cajuns. Marcus Stroman was a game time decision, but he has yet to suit up. Cajuns trying to find some offense as they take a step back, right arc three and drill it. Malik Marchetti, he has been one of the best three point shooters in the country this year. He's now 10 for 18. It's 31 28 Raging Cajuns. Sadler tries to answer for a long top of the key three, rims in and out. It's rebounded by Marchetti. Malik challenges Powell. Runs to the right block, fades from five feet, and gets the soft touch, Malik Marchetti. He captained at USC in his second season, but transferred. And after sitting out last season, he's coming off of a career-high performance against McNeese on Tuesday. Cajuns are within one. Powell wing right, screen set by Lions. Off to Rutledge, free throw line extended to the right. Lions post up, goes to work, baby. Hook shot, soft it's in. Gets Lorenz, stall cup. Lions scores, and it's 33 to 30 nickels. Bryce Washington, quick dribbling at midcourt. Over to Russell, pull it right wing three. It's off the back rim. He gets his own rebound, finds Marchetti, who answers with a deep right arc three, and Malik Marchetti has taken over. We're tied at 33, eight straight for the 6'6 junior from Compton. Right sideline, Rutledge to Lyons. Top of the key, zips the pass to the left corner. Johnson against Russell, wraps it around to the right wing. Ball faking, stepping back is Rutledge. Over to Powell, great move as he steps into a 17-footer. It's long, tip rebound Bryce Washington, and he might have a double-double in the first half. Five minutes to play in the first half. Washington working in tandem with Marchetti. Double up this man. Marchetti playing with the white knee pads on his right and left leg. Sends it over, wing left. Curling off the screen as Stove hesitates and gives it to Washington, who's fouled and he'll get free throws. Bryce Washington, six points, eight rebounds, and assist in the first half. You're not supposed to admire the opposition, but he, he has a style, an approach that you love in the modern era of basketball. 6'6", 255, you need me to run press break, coach? Need me to catch it midcourt and initiate the offense? I got it. Washington will miss the first free throw attempt, and we stay tied at 33. Imagine playing St. Augs in high school baseball back in 2012, 2013, and Bryce Washington shows up and is the starting pitcher you have to face. Play baseball, play basketball at St. Augs. 
all conference is a baseball player as well, but he misses both free throws, and Peters has the rebound. Locates Powell for a wide open left corner three, misses it badly, and Zaquavian Smith goes over the back. Um, Bryce Washington, Colonels pick up the foul, and that is how you can have these major pendulum swings in a game. You miss a wide open three, over and back foul, now free throws for UL. With 4.32 to play in the opening half, Cedric Russell was trying to sneak into the free throw line and take these shots instead of Washington, but it's back to the free throw line for Bryce Washington. It's been an odd year at the line for Washington. He's under 50%. He's a career 62% free throw shooter. Bryce Washington, big make in the final one and one of the half for UL. He sinks the first attempt, 34-33 Cajuns. He's now 12 for 26 from the line this season and goes one for two as Regis snares the rebound. Colonel Ball down by a point. Peters wasting no time, burning down the baseline. Gives it to Regis, pivot to the left, kick out to Johnson, left corner jumper. In. But he makes it over the long arms of Lorenz Stalkup. Colonels leading 35 to 34. Russell trapping midcourt and before the steal, a foul called on either Johnson or Smith, and Kevin Johnson can't believe it. KJ thought he had the takeaway, and well, it wouldn't be a dunk. We're not there yet with Kevin. There will be dunks in his career, but it would have been a wide open layup. Instead, two free throws for Cedric Russell. Freshman from Alexandria misses the first. Only his second free throw attempt of the season. He's missed both of those attempts. This is the number five combo guard in the country in the 2017 class of high school recruits. Committed to LSU in the spring of 2014. Changed his mind 18 months later. And what an addition he has been for Bob Marlin as he makes the second free throw. We're knotted up at 35. Final four minutes of half number one from Stouffer Gym, campus of Nickel State University. Peter at the point. Cross to the right elbow. Step up, 15-footer. It's off the back rim. Tip rebound comes down to Bryce Washington. He's got nine in the first half. Cedric Russell. He'll run the point with no Marcus Stroman. Washington working with Stalkup. Top of the key to the left sideline. Screen set for Marchetti. Trapped and doubled. Fights through. Slings it right corner. Washington goes baseline. Misses the layup. He panicked on the release, but he gets his 10th rebound. Finds Russell. Wide open left corner. Three. No. Tip rebound to Powell in the right corner. And the Colonels have it. Powell. Diamond pass right corner. From the wing, Johnson goes back to Zaquavian. Smith, he's fouled by Stalkup. Two free throws for Zaquavian. He had to levitate. Went middle. He wanted the left lane layup. Saw a six foot nine forward crashing, tried to go up and under, but he'll get free throws and the Colonels will look to take the lead when we return to Stouffer with 3.18 to play in the first half. We're knotted up at 35, 20 points between Sadler and Peters for the Colonels. Zaquavian Smith looking for his first two of the night after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Colonels and the Cajuns tied with 318 to play in the opening half. Louisiana has played Nichols nine times in the history of these two programs in Thibodeau. And obviously you have to go back to the University of Southwestern Louisiana days for UL. 1971, the last time they played in this arena, they've won eight of the nine games in Thibodeau. 
But Zaquavian Smith, he'll hit the first free throw, and the Colonels are back on top by one. Zaquavian hits both free throws, and Tavon Sadler will get an opportunity to re-enter for Nichols. Powell exits, and it's Sequavian Smith, Davon Sadler, Roddy Peters, Kevin Johnson, and Daniel Regis for Nichols. Full court pressure coming for Bryce Washington. Gets it to Jonathan Stove. And against Peters in the backcourt, one-on-one -on -one between Stove and Peters. Stove ready for the trap. He walks into it, loses the ball. Peters takes it away. Johnson, break away with Washington approaching, and oop, and layup. It's missed, but the tip rebound by Regis is good. It leads to two points. All that matters, 39-35 Nichols. Out of control sequence in midcourt by Marchetti, and he kicks it out of bounds. Last touch by the Colonels as Peters tried to take it away at the last second. 2.52 on the clock, and half number one, Malik Marchetti, Cedric Russell, Justin Miller. We've got Stove and Washington in the game for UL. Air down by four, 2.40 on the clock. Russell at the top of the key, won't use a screen from Washington. He flashes and catches right arm. Deep into the right corner where a three is up and long. It's missed off the back rim by Marchetti. Colonels come up with the board and force the foul. Free throws for Nichols as Tavon Sadler has been relentless on the glass. 11 points, four rebounds, a couple steals. This has to be a group effort. You have to gang up on these rebounds against UL. Louisiana still has a plus five advantage on the glass, but you'll live with it. They were plus 10 last year against Nichols. They were plus eight in turnovers. Colonels have only turned it over three times. Louisiana's up to seven, but Sequavian Smith cannot make the free throw. All five of his free throw attempts coming into tonight's game were against Villanova. And he's two for three from the line this evening. Couple dribbles and a shot that's good. Sequavian Smith has handed the Colonels their largest lead of the first half. 40 to 35 nickels. Two and a half minutes on the clock. One, two, two, three quarter court pressure as Stoves loses it to the left sideline. Stolen by Regis. Now a two on three. Peters into the paint. A kick out to Smith. Right corner three short. Pencil gets the rebound. But Regis loses the ball. Yet is fortunate. It's last touch by Russell in Louisiana. Out of bounds in front of Bob Marlin in the Louisiana sideline. Colonel possession with 2.17 on the clock. Nichols has missed three wide open threes with three of their better players, and they're still up by five. Smith, Powell, Rutledge, you cannot give those three a couple more wide open looks. Raging Cajuns trying to figure out exactly what they walked into tonight. Frank Bartley is back in. Malik Marchetti, Justin Miller, Jonathan Stove, Cedric Russell in for the Raging Cajuns. Sadler, Smith, Peters, Kevin Johnson, and Daniel Regis for Nichols. Pick and roll for Peters. He slashes, scoops, and scores it. Right hand finish, seven point Colonel Lee, but a midcourt outlet to Bartley. Easy layup. That's how quickly they can strike. 42 to 37, Nichols. Smith deep in the right corner for the Colonels. Back to midcourt to Peters. Center circle. It's Tavon Sadler backing up, now sizing up Bartley. Left-handed dribble to the paint, spins into a double team, jump ball. UL possession, no. We had one official indicated it was Lafayette ball, and another that pointed to the Colonels. Possession arrow flickered off for a second. All good, Colonel ball. 146 on the clock in the first half, five-point Nichols lead. Inbound right quarter to Peters. Hard attack, middle, out to Sadler. Left wing three, it's off left, tipped long, and then an over and back on Nichols. And Raji Lyons will step back in for Nichols. The fourth wide open three the Colonels have missed. Regis will pick up his first foul, but these dead ball free throws that you're providing, they become dead ball free throws when you go over and back and stop the flow of the game. Second time the Colonels have gone over and back when UL has been in the bonus. Let's see if Miller can make the Colonels pay. Struggling mightily from the free throw line. The lefty attempts and makes the first attempt. Miller is two for five from the line. Those are his only points in this game. 42 to 38, Nichols. 
Miller had 18 points, nine rebounds, and four assists against the Colonels last year. He was nine of 12 from the floor. Miller, two for two. Three point game, it's 42 to 39 Nichols. Raji Lyons is ready to set the pick on the right sideline for Peters, who won't use it. He goes baseline. Repositioning at the free throw line is Peters. He gave to the left corner for a Smith three. It's blocked by Stove. And then a foul on Raji Lyons. And this is how UL is back in the game with 124 on the clock. They were never out of it, but if you have the ball up by five, you hate to see how the last 30 seconds have played out for the Colonels. Missed three, over and back foul. Contested three, blocked. And Raji Lyons refused to give up on the ball, and now it's Miller living at the free throw line in the first half. Three straight makes for Miller. It's the first, and it's 42 to 40. Colonel still on top by two, but three straight from the line for Louisiana. 11 for 21 in the first half from the free throw line for the Cajuns. Miller quick release and a miss. High left block rebound for Zaquavian Smith. And mark this moment, Richie Riley telling his team to slow it down. Savor these seconds, these slow seconds. You don't see it often for the number five scoring team in the country. Wing left, Peters will post up lines. Left block against Miller. A give out of the post to the left dark. Heading to the right is Peters. Jumps, pumps, shoots, and scores. Everything is effortless with Ronnie Peters. 44 to 40, Colonels. Midcourt, Jonathan Stowe, quick trap. Picks up his dribble, finds Bartley right arc. A give and go to Stowe, who scores it. Dable pump in the paint. Jonathan Stowe and the Cajuns are within two. 45 seconds to play in half number one. Colonels will call timeout, and we'll see if Nichols tries to get a quick two for one. Probably can't do it with the clock at 40.5, but at least you can draw up your last shot of half number one. And, and who knows, with Richie Riley, 10.5 seconds, you want to get this shot off in the next five seconds to ensure you have one more possession or at least a half court shot at the buzzer. And I'm sure Coach Riley trying to make sure that his team gets one more great look before halftime arrives. 44 to 42 Nichols. This game was never close in Lafayette last year. Nichols cut it to 13 at the half. It was 48 to 35 Raging Cajuns, but they jumped on Nichols in the opening minutes of the second half. It was a 102-69 win for UL, but this is Richie Riley's team in 2018. Only Lafayette Rutledge, Stevie Repahowski, and Javon Powell are back from the 2017 team that finished tied for eighth in the Southland Conference. Colonel's ready to go. Roddy Peters at midcourt. He's got Lyons, Johnson, Sadler, and Rutledge in the game. Raging Cajuns will try to D up with Malik Marchetti against Peters. Pass goes ISO right to Sadler. Backing his way into the right block against Bartley. Fades along the baseline. High arcing shot is long, but still loses it. Johnson gets it back, and Peters has a left block layup. Kevin Johnson never gives up on the ball. 46-42. Colonels with a four-point lead. 14 seconds to play in the first half. And we'll get a stoppage of play as a foul is called on the Colonels. And with 13.4 seconds to play in the first half, it's the last thing you want to see is Nichols fouling at midcourt and now free throws for Jonathan Stowe. Huge first half for Stowe, and he'll make the first free throw. 13 points on five of seven shooting, but he's had some major issues with turnovers. He has five of the Raging Cajuns turnovers. They have nine in the game. And it looks like Nichols will have a halftime lead. 46-43 Colonels, 13.4 seconds left in the first half. Second free throw by Stowe. And he will make it. 46-44, Roddy Peters ready for one last possession for Nichols. Box at eight, Colonels up two. Peters, a drive to the right, hesitation dribble, baseline floater off the backboard, no. Lions with the pick, oh, as time expires. And the first half ends with Nichols leading at 48 to 44. Impressive showing for the Colonels as they have a four point lead at the half and Raji Lyons producing at every point in this game, delivering one more big basket to ensure that Nichols has a two possession advantage at intermission. 
It's halftime from Thibodeau, and we will have your Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional Halftime Show. We'll recap the opening 20 minutes and look ahead to half number two. Colonels on top by four against Louisiana. This is Colonel Basketball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Colonels trailed by as many as six. Louisiana jumped out to an early lead, as they are known to do, especially against the Colonels over the last few years. But it's fun to look at the career mark of programs. It's always notable to remind you of the past history between two programs. But there is no point in touching on the past when it comes to this 2017-2018 Colonel team. Richie Riley has rebuilt this program with his brand of basketball players relied heavily on a bunch of grad transfers or junior transfers from high major programs the results are 10 seniors that are in, in their ride or die stage of their basketball careers bunch of veterans bunch of old heads bunch of guys that have those gray hairs ready to make an appearance and are trying to take the most of all the wisdom accumulated through years of, of hooping in Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Cleveland, Phoenix, L.A. I mean, this is a team constructed from across the country. Yet, you look at the box score tonight, where would Nichols be without a couple true freshmen from New Orleans and Thibodeau? Kevin Johnson and Raji Lyons do not shy away from these moments. Raji Lyons plays seven of the most important minutes of his life 
in the first half of this game. He gives you four points, three rebounds, and an assist. He had played 20 seconds against a D1 team. When you look at his season stats, it says 22 minutes, and he played 20 total against Spring Hill in Blue Mountain College. Played a minute against Villanova technically, but he was in the game for the last 20 seconds, and that was it for Division I competition for Lions. But he made that 11-hour bus ride to Edinburgh, Texas, when the Colonels opened and picked up a win against UTRGV. Was on the plane to Baltimore and, and D.C. to the UMBC Thanksgiving tournament and watched from the bench against Presbyterian in Baltimore County. Stay ready. We have seen Lions embodying that approach and doing it well in a big opportunity tonight against a really good Sunbelt Conference team. That Louisiana only has four more rebounds than the Colonels, that is a win. Now you want to be even, you'd like to win that battle, but you go into this game knowing that Louisiana is an elite rebounding team. They average four more than their opponents. They led the Sun Belt in rebounding margin last season. But Louisiana misses 20 shots and comes up with nine offensive rebounds. A decent ratio, but your fear is that they will feast on the glass and get way too many easy looks. Louisiana is two for 11 on threes tonight. And they are 0 for 8 if you remove Malik Marchetti from the equation. Bartley's missed all three of his threes. Stowe, Russell, Jerikas Davis, P.J. Hardy. They've all missed their attempts as well. Jonathan Stowe had a great first half. He had 14 points, but he also turned it over five times. Difficult to see Nichols putting together such a tough and difficult first half against so many impressive players, yet they're still on top. 11 rebounds for Bryce Washington, and you're on top by four. 14 points for Stowe, but Bartley only has five. You'll give up 14 points if Stowe's willing to turn it over five times, and, and he has. You've got three turnovers from Bryce Washington. Offensively for Nichols, balance. And Peters and Sadler are going to dominate the stat sheet, nine in and nine out. They're going to do most of your scoring at the top. But when you get 26 points from them and 22 from the rest of your team, absolutely embrace it. Rutledge hits a three. Quavian makes three free throws. Four points for Lions. Put back bucket for Daniel Regis. Kevin Johnson opened the game with a three. Kevin Johnson was playing getting ready for a holiday tournament in Thibodeau a year ago right now. And he flew under the radar his entire time at E.D. White High School. Took center stage in district games and became more of a, a notable name in the postseason last year. But he had committed to the Colonels going into his senior season. He did not want distractions. Said, hey, I, I want to approach my senior season. I want Richie Riley to know that I'm a Colonel. I'm staying home. That was the first true high school signee for Coach Riley. And look at the results a year later. Kevin Johnson is starting for a 4-3 Colonel Club and opening the game against a team ranked as the number 12 mid-major program in the country and giving Nichols an early lead to start this game. We'll see what half number two looks like for Nichols, but they certainly are feeling flush with confidence as they hold a 48 to 44 advantage against the Cajuns. Louisiana, a, a whole host of in-state opponents coming through the Cajun Dome or experiencing Louisiana on their home floor. Louisiana played McNeese earlier in the week. They won 89 to 78. That was on the heels of a win against Richmond, a win against Iowa, a third place finish in their holiday tournament in the Cayman Islands. Louisiana will take Loyola next. They'll, they'll play Loyola of New Orleans in five days. Then you're at Louisiana Tech. You're home against UNO. You're home against Southeastern. And then finally, you leave the Pelican State. You'll head to Richie Riley's old turf in Clemson, South Carolina. And that'll be a December 22nd game against an ACC opponent in Clemson. Until then, a lot of winnable opportunities for Louisiana to stake their claim on a great non-conference season. They went 21-12 last year. They were 9-9 in the Sun Belt, finished strong, ended up 
10 and 8 in the Sun Belt, finished strong, winning their last six games. They were preseason number five, but there was no disparity between the number two and five teams in those preseason polls. It, it's UT Arlington expected to run the conference again, but Louisiana, a lot of firepower, an impressive start to the season. And we'll see if they can muster up a quick start to open the second half and retake this lead and make the Colonels play from behind. We haven't seen a zone from Bob Marlin. You figured he would be reluctant to do so, but when Nichols has struggled offensively, it's been against a 2-3 or 1-3-1 zone, changed the game against UMBC in last Friday's 89-88 loss to Baltimore County. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some flashes of that zone at half number two against the Colonels. 48-44, Louisiana trailing by four. Colonels shoot 43% from the floor. They make three of 10 threes. They go 13 of 29 from the free throw line. But they come up with seven steals. They turn the Cajuns over nine times. And Louisiana missing nine of their 11 three-point attempts and missing 11 of their 25 free throw attempts. Kept the Colonels in the game. We're ready for half number two. Nichols leads it 48 to 44 on ESPN Radio New Orleans. As the leader in sanitation for Tip Town, USA. Colonels and the Cajuns, 48-44. Nichols on top. And we are thrilled to have you with us on ESPN1003.com. If you're listening, if you're watching, we decided to mix it up this season. We'll have 13 Colonel men's basketball games, not only audio streamed and, and able for you to enjoy in New Orleans, down by you, and Thibodeau and Homa. 
you'll also be able to watch these games as well on ESPN1003.com. Have a bunch of women's basketball games also in store. And it should be a fun season at Stouffer Gym. If you're wondering what kind of team the Colonels have this year, look no further than half number one and what Nichols was able to achieve against one of the best mid-major programs in the country and certainly in the Sun Belt. Four-point lead for Nichols. And they will have to D up in the left front court. Possession number one is Malik Marchetti. Will present the ball back to the officials following a Frank Bartley offensive foul seven seconds into half number two. Kevin Johnson's on the floor for the Colonels along with Kamani Jackson, Javon Powell, Roddy Peters, and Tavon Sadler. Malik Marchetti, Bryce Washington, Jakeen and Gant, Jonathan Stove, and Frank Bartley for UL. Peters at the point. Heads hard to the right. Picks up his dribble. Nice pump fake. Angle shot short. Rebound by Jackson. He scores it. And that's why he's shooting 83% from the floor. Second chance points for the Colonels. They're leading by six. And kicking it in the backcourt. Losing the ball is Marchetti. It'll stay with UL. But with the shot clock already at 21 seconds. Have fun if you're UL. They have one second to get this basketball across the timeline. 50 to 44, Colonels with the lead. Washington to Stove, and that is a 10 second violation. Stove had no idea. There's a rule change going into last season. That you do not get that reset on the 10 second rule off deflections going out of bounds in the backcourt. Colonel Ball at midcourt, Bartley almost stole it. Peters sideline right in front of Coach Richie Riley. Peters wastes no time, heading to the rim and scoring. He took on three Raging Cajuns, finishes off the glass. Colonel scored the first four of the second half. They lead it 52 to 44. Ural breaks the press, throws it away. Bartley was looking for a streaking Jakeen and Gant. He bounces it off the back wall. Double digit turnovers for the Raging Cajuns and Bob Marlow, we need more time to talk about this trapping, pressuring, Colonel defense that has rattled the Raging Cajuns and will force a timeout 60 seconds into the second half. And Bob Marlin standing at the free throw line, hands in his pocket, looking at the Colonel sideline and now approaching his team, but first allowing his players to have an internal conversation. And now Coach Marlin will break into the huddle and have a few words for this Louisiana Raging Cajun team. Five and two on the season. Blowout against McNeese earlier in the week. Real nice win against Richmond. They took care of Iowa. Only loss in the Cayman Islands was to Wyoming. But a third place finish for Louisiana. Back-to-back -back wins coming into tonight's game. Bob Marlin, he has had Nichols' number forever. 17-6 and six in 23 games against the Colonels. But he said in, in yesterday's press conference, I've taken championship teams to Thibodeau and barely gotten out of there alive. His last game here was in 2010. Colonels had Fred Hunter, Anatoly Bowes. That was a team that could hoop, and Nichols went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sam Houston State. Sam Houston went 14-2 in the Southland in 2010, played in the NCAA tournament. Bearcats picked up a 75-69 win. Those eight years have passed, and these two programs have gone in different directions, but Bob Marlin, Back in Thibodeau, coach in Louisiana tonight. But his Cajuns trail by eight, and it's Colonel Ball. Kimani Jackson, catch right elbow, handoff to Sadler for an easy score. Jackson on the handoff and the assist. Ten point lead for Nichols. 13 points for Sadler, and Powell gets a steal on the inbound, but he goes out of bounds, and this is baffling that you didn't get the foul call on the push in the back on what would have been Cedric Russell's second foul. Colonels will play on and continue to intensify their defense. Powell just missed out on a backcourt steal. Instead, it's Cajun possession with 18 and a half minutes to play. Colonels have scored the first six of the second half, and Powell strips Russell right at midcourt. Another steal for Nichols, their ninth of the game. Peters baseline drive, floater is blocked by Gant. Peters gets it back, out to Powell. 
unselfish on the give to Johnson. He keeps his dribble, slings it cross court to the right sideline. Peters uses the pick from Jackson, gives it inside. He powers up and has it blocked. Great defense by Gant. Washington comes up with it for Louisiana. Dribbling through traffic is Marchetti. Wheels baseline and runs over a call but won't get an offensive foul call. A dunk in the interior by Gant. And Kevin Johnson and Sadler can't believe it. They stood their ground, their offensive foul. Colonel's lead is down to eight. It's 54 to 46 nickels. Peters just passed left arc to Johnson. Curls and gives it to Sadler. Hesitation into the left lane, out to power. Left wing three over Stowe is off the back rim, but KJ has the top of the key rebound. Whip around to Jackson. He's fouled and gets free throws. Kevin Johnson does everything. Point guard who will post you, goes after second chance buckets, keeps possessions alive, never gives up on a play. He's got two steals in the backcourt off of misses for Nichols tonight when it looks like Louisiana is ready to push pace and get into a secondary break. Kept this position alive, kept this entire possession alive, and now Jackson attempts and makes the free throw attempt. 55 to 46, Colonel's on top by nine. Eighth game of the season for Kamani Jackson. You know, he has already topped his season average for minutes per game. He's only playing 12 minutes per game because he fouls more than almost any other player in the country. But he will make both free throws, and it's a 10-point lead for Nichols, 56 to 46. Bartley spins away from a trap on the right side, then at midcourt. Drop off right corner. Baseline drive, Marchetti. Great jump stop. Whistle. And on the floor, we have a foul on Nichols. And that is a difficult development for the Colonels. Third foul on Kamani Jackson. He averages 11 fouls per 40 minutes. He now has 26 fouls in 89 minutes this season. And Kamani was pretty blunt when discussing those facts. We lack size, I'm not giving up layups. All right, understandable. Right baseline inbound into the right corner. Stove has it right lane, faces at the free throw line. Two hard dribbles middle, jump pass to Washington who scores it in the right block. There was no room to make that pass. Cajuns pull it off, they trail 56-48. On ball pick and roll for Peters. Speed to the left, into two defenders and Gant blocks his shot out of bounds. Jakeen and Gant, 6'8", 210-pound junior from Springfield, Georgia, by way of Columbia, Missouri. Spent two years with Mizzou. Sat out last season, and what a difference maker he's been. Johnson has it on the right arc, deep right corner, Sadler against Washington. Sadler goes to work, heads baseline, and gets the foul. Third foul on Bryce Washington. Now, Washington's upset, but this is the matchup mayhem the Colonels will cause. Washington, 6'6", 255. Sadler, 6'6", 215, but he'll play point. Washington gets caught on Sadler. And Tavon takes him off the dribble and goes baseline. You have three fouls on Jakeen and Gant and three on Bryce Washington. There's 16.57 to play in this game, and the Cajuns are without their starting point guard, Marcus Stroman. Sadler makes the free throw. Nichols is up nine. 14 points, four rebounds, two steals for Tavon Sadler. Went back home to Baltimore last weekend, had Thanksgiving dinner with his family. Also helped out in a big win in the UMBC tournament in game one against Presbyterian. And now he makes both free throws. Colonels are up 10. Bartley at midcourt, quick pass right side, Linda Stowe into the right block, up under, and drawing the foul is Jakeen and Gant. Patient set of events. Jakeen and Gant from the right block to the left and kept waiting until Colonel left his feet. Third foul on Legend Roberton. Everybody is in foul trouble with 16.48 to play in this game. Free throw by Gant, and he makes it. Jakeenan was the sixth member of Missouri's 2014 class to lead their team, and who can blame him? with everything that was going on in Mizzou at that time. He was a top 50 recruit out of high school in Georgia. And he'll go two for two. He's got six points in the game. Cajuns are within eight. 58 to 50 nickels, 16.43 to play. 
Peters presents the pass to the right sideline. Javon Powell back to Raji Lyons at the head of the arc. Give to Sadler, Lyons sets the screen. Heading to the hoop and drawing the foul is Tavon Sadler. And Jonathan still can't believe it, but two Cajuns ran right in to Tavon Sadler. Stowe picks up his second foul, but here's the biggest factor for the Cajuns. You've got four fouls in three and a half minutes. Nichols has already attempted 19 free throws in this game, and they'll get number 20 and 21 right here. Three dribbles for Sadler. Attempts and makes the first free throw attempt. He's five for seven from the line. Tavon will not get his fifth make. He misses the second. Gant has the rebound. Cajuns trail by nine. They're in possession and they'll pull up from 15 and Marquette makes it. Malik Marquette, he scored eight straight in the first half. He's up to 12 points in the game, 59-52 Colonels. Peters wastes no time, gets to the free throw line, pushes it from 13. It's short. That's rebound number 12 for Washington, but the outlet pass is stolen away from Marquette. Powell on the run in the paint. Lyons wasn't ready for the exchange, and he drops it out of bounds. 59-52 Colonels. And pace of play has favored Nichols from the opening tip. And crazy to say, when you're playing a team that averages almost 90 points per game, UL can score it. But the Colonels really having some fun with their style and approach tonight. And Powell picks up the inbound pass, tries the top of the key, three, and makes it. 62 to 52, Nichols. Javon Powell, steal, score, 10 point lead. Washington's at midcourt for UL. This pass is tipped out of bounds by Ronnie Peters, and what a way to segue to the first media timeout of the second half. All curls in the opening four minutes of half number two. They've scored 14 of the first 22 points in the second half. They scored the first six. They forced Bob Marlin to call a timeout 60 seconds into the second half. Louisiana trails 62 to 52 with 15.46 to play on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Hello, this is... Tonight, Nichols was finishing up a 102-69 loss in the Cajun Dome against UL. A year later, with 15.46 to play in the second half in Thibodeau, Nichols has a 62-52 lead against Louisiana. Cajun ball, wing left to Bryce Washington. He starts the long process of backing down Roddy Peters. Now he kicks it to the left corner, repost. Washington is doubled, has to kick out. Marchetti crosses to the left lot. Floater from eight is short. Tip rebound comes down to the Cajuns, and Gant gets fouled before his second chance put back. Both teams living dangerously with the foul game. It's now affecting both the Cajuns and the Colonels in half number two. That's going to be foul number three on Zaquavian Smith. And it's Jonathan Stove shooting the free throws, and he'll make the first. Jonathan Stove led everybody in scoring in the first half. He had 14 points. And he's up to 16 after two made free throws. 62 to 54 Nichols. Peters, Johnson, Smith, Powell, and Raji Lyons for the Colonels. 
Marchetti's Dean up Peters at the point. Lions now catch it straight away. Back to wrap around, picked off, stolen by Stove. He'll lead the break, run into two defenders, and he gets fouled by Lions. And Raji Lions, a quick exit. Coach Riley immediately pointed to Daniel Regis on the bench and told him to get in. Third foul on Lions. He, he has done his job tonight and some. You're without Mauricio Fields for at least the next couple weeks. Maurice has been a reliable number two power forward, but he has that MCL sprain that's kept him out of the last three games. And Stove has made three straight free throws. Sadler replaces Kevin Johnson. Lions exits in favor of Daniel Regis. You're a true freshman. There's going to be growing pains for Lions, and Richie Riley immediately meets Lions and slaps his hand and says, there will be more. Be ready. And Lions knows that this is not a, a one and done opportunity, but he'll have to watch the next few minutes from the bench as Stove makes another free throw. Four big makes for Stove. It's a six point lead for Nichols. 62 to 56, Colonels, 15 10 to play in the game. Peters heads hard to the right. Great defense by Marchetti. Peters tries again. Marchetti takes it away. Peters won't be stopped, but he misses the one on five shot from inside the paint. It's rebounded by Marchetti. He'll head up the floor, pass left corner for a Bartley three. Inevitable. He makes it, and that's a quick timeout for Richie Riley. 7 0 run for you out, just like that. Seven points in the last minute. Four free throws by Stove. And Frank Bartley, third team all Louisiana last year. Over 600 points in 40 games with the Cajuns in two seasons. 62 to 59. Colonels with the lead, but a 30 second timeout for Richie Riley. Big weekend for the Raging Cajun community. We're missing our buddy Jay Walker tonight, the voice of Cajun football, basketball, baseball. He's slumming it in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina right now, getting ready for the Cajuns and Appalachian State tomorrow. I'd love to see Louisiana come up with that win, improve to five and three in the Sun Belt, get back to six wins on the season and be bowl eligible. Colonel Football just finished up a, a phenomenal season where they lost in the opening round of the playoffs against South Dakota, 38 to 31. You love seeing your friends from Lafayette come down here and, and realize that everybody was paying attention to Colonel Football and their postseason opportunity against South Dakota. A lot of compliments from the Louisiana Sports Information staff, and we certainly wish the Cajuns well tomorrow in Boone, North Carolina. Colonel Ball with 14 and a half minutes to play. They lead it by three. Peter sideline right to Zaquavian Smith, and here's the zone. Been waiting all night for it. Sadler walks into it at the free throw line, loses the ball, picks it up, saves it to Smith. Peters wing right to Powell, left corner. Great find to Smith, but the shot clock expires before the Colonels can attempt a shot. And you've got a violation with 14-18 to play in the game, and Lafayette Rutledge and Kevin Johnson, their services immediately requested from Coach Riley. Powell and Smith will exit. Rutledge, Johnson, Peters, Regis, and Sadler for the Colonels. Gant, Stove, Washington, Marchetti, and Bartley for the University of Louisiana Lafayette. Cajun's on a 7-0 run. Marchetti's going to post up Johnson, goes to work on the left block, but kicks out. Wide open left wing three. Gant misses it long. Free throw on rebound for Lafayette Rutledge. Gant can shoot it. 33% three-point shooter on the year, was left alone, but he can't tie the game. Johnson deep right corner against the 2-3 zone. Sadler, he'll try a left wing three over Bartley, back rims it. Big rebound, left wing stove, an amazing outlet pass. Bartley fouled and scores it. Jonathan Stove, hot stove pass, 80 feet. Cajuns on a 9-0 run. And you have to marvel at certain moments in this game that you out jump everybody, get the rebound, and have a flat footed baseball pass. Frank Bartley. After Stove made four in a row from the free throw line, Bartley hits a three, now gets the bucket. He'll look to make this a 10 0 run and finish up six straight points. Double figures for Bartley tonight. He's got 10 in the game. Positions himself for the free throw, but leaves it well short. Sadler has the rebound. 80% free throw shooter. Bartley misses an opportunity to tie this game up. Let's see how the Colonels attack this zone. We've got a lot of shooters in the game. Peters straightaway screen set by a flaring Sadler. Now gives it back to the right arc. 
Backs away from Bartley, clock at 10. Kick out right corner, Johnson pumps, steps into a long two, off the back rim. Free throw line, rebound Frank Bartley in Louisiana. Bartley races to the right, quick give to Washington, who's fouled from behind by Sadler. It's his second foul, and we'll get free throws for the University of Louisiana. Bryce Washington was assertive early in this game. He was looking for his offense and drew a lot of attention. Now he's positioned himself in a complimentary role, which is something he has thrived in in four seasons with Lafayette. Washington ties it up. He makes the first free throw. 27th double-double of his career. 10 points, 12 rebounds. 1,045 points in his career. He will stay on that number. He misses the second free throw. Kimani claims the rebound, and Jackson pushes it up the floor for the Colonels. Left sideline, it's Johnson quickly finding Kimani Jackson, who gets fouled from behind, and that's a credit to Kimani Jackson. He gets the rebound, starts the secondary break, and now he'll be provided with two free throws with the game knotted up at 62 and 13 minutes on the clock, and Bryce Washington is called for his fourth foul. Kimani Jackson, three for four from the line tonight. Three patient dribbles, spins the basketball, attempts the free throw and clanks it long. We stay tied at 62. Four of the Cajuns on the floor in double figures. Peters and Sadler have 33 of the Colonel's 62 points, but Peters will take a break and Powell is back in. Kimani Jackson looking to give the Colonels the lead. He can't, misses it off left. To Keenan Gant on the rebound for UL. No outlet to the left. Dark Marchetti, great find, and drawing the foul before he attacks is Justin Miller. No look give, left wing to the right block. And the Cajuns have erased a 10-point deficit, and they are ready to retake this lead. Bob Marlin called a timeout with 19.01 left in the half. Had the media timeout. At just under 16, and coming out of the media timeout, that has been the biggest difference for UL. Went to his own, made four straight free throws, got a three-pointer by Bartley, then an and-one bucket by Bartley, and now the Cajuns are back on top as Bartley makes the first free throw attempt. Frank Bartley, Jr., two for two. And the Cajuns have a 64 to 62 lead with 12.49 to play. They'll extend their pressure, Colonel's break. Johnson, right sideline in front of the Colonel bench. Back to the center of the circle, Powell. Looking over his options, tried to drop it off to Sadler, deflected by Bartley. Now back to the left corner where Rutledge shoots a three over Gant, leaves it long to the right. Right sideline rebound from Malik Marchetti. Malik will take on Kevin Johnson, spins into traffic, stolen by Powell. One on one into Bartley, Powell pumps and leaves the shot short, but unable to save it as Jonathan Stove, and it'll stay with the Colonels. 12-15 to play in half number two. No, it won't. Apparently last touch by Kevin Johnson. And the Cajuns take over, and legend Roberton has to get back quickly. They inbound 80 feet down the floor, and Gant gets the service on a platter. L.O. Dunk, 66-62 Cajuns. Colonel Scott sleeping, 14-0-1 for UL. Secondary break right sideline for Sadler. Into a double team, he's forced to kick to Powell. Back to Sadler, right corner. Two hard dribbles middle, and a block called on UL before an offensive foul was called by the weak side official. Nichols with 11.53 left in the game. They're trying to withstand a big burst by the Raging Cajuns. 14 unanswered by UL. They have a 66-62 lead with 11.53 to play. Colonel's looking for a comeback out of this timeout. This is Nichols basketball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Vision communication is proud to announce Lightweight, a breakthrough in television view. The interactive programming guide
56 to 62 advantage, 11.53 to play from Stouffer Gymnasium on the campus of Nickel State University. First time since 1971 we've seen the Cajuns in Colonel Country. Louisiana on a 14-0 run. Colonels had this lead at 10. Powell on the left guard, back to Kevin Johnson, right sideline, clocks at 10. 2-3 zone, change in the game. And a tip on the sideline as Bartley got his hand on it. Colonels will keep possession with the clock at five. Inbound Powell right arc, down to four. Left corner, Rutledge, all alone, three. Barely hits the rim, and Rutledge mistimes his jump. Rebound right block by the Raging Cajuns and Malik Marchetti. Missed opportunity for Nichols. That's the number two three-point shooter in the country that just had a wide open look. Miller right block, great give to the left lane, and a floater is in by Frank Bartley. 16-0 run for the Cajuns, 68-62 Louisiana. Powell pushes the pass, sideline left to Kevin Johnson. Sadler trying to run elbow to elbow, can't find a passing lane. Now he has to catch straight away to Powell right arc, back to Sadler. Ball movement is there, Kevin Johnson's baseline floater is not from the left lane, he airballs it, Marchetti another freebie rebound. Miller posts up left block, spins away from traffic and scores with his strong hand. The lefty finish, 70 to 62 Cajuns. Stop the bleeding, Colonels have to come away with a point on this possession. They'll have free throws for the duration of the game, but the zone has limited the fouls for Louisiana. Left corner, Rutledge. High post feed to Sadler. Heads to the block, spins into traffic. Baby hook is short, nothing is falling. Right block rebound again for Malik Marchetti. Three straight, right block rebounds. Marchetti to Miller, left lane attack into Roberton who blocks his shot. Stove saves it, but can't come down with possession. It's Powell at midcourt, Colonels a run. Jackson left wing, back to midcourt legend Roberton, and the seven footer finds a guard. Now it's Johnson, open, left corner three, off the right rim, Malik Marchetti. Somebody backs him out on the right block. Marchetti with the rebound. Eight point Cajun lead. 9.52 to play. Will the Colonels ever see a man to man defense again? And a foul and continuation on a right block runner for Jonathan Stove and one bucket. Cajuns up by 10. Timeout, Richie Riley. Not a lot Nichols can do with Louisiana starting to run away with it. They've got a 72 to 62 lead. A lot of time left to be played, but with 9.46 on the clock, what once was a 62 to 52 advantage for Nichols, a 20-0 run by the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. And it is across the board. It's Bartley, it's Stove, it's Marchetti. Malik Marchetti, congratulations on the first double-double of your career. He scored a career high in points against McNeese. Now a game later, 12 points, 10 rebounds, three assists. His career high on, on the glass was seven rebounds. He is a player. Just not the right fit at USC for him. He was actually a part of Andy Enfield's first recruiting class was a captain his sophomore season, but shots weren't falling. He missed 50 of his 73 pointers at USC, and now he's statistically the top three point shooter in the Sun Belt. He's 10 for 16 on threes on the season, actually 11 for 17, he made another one tonight. Had four big rebounds in a row, and he set up the and one bucket that Stove was able to make and now convert with the free throw. Stove hits the free throw. It's a 21-0 run, and Stove is up to 21 points in the game. 73-62 to 62 Cajuns, and that is a new career high in points for Jonathan Stove. He loves Southland Conference teams. Had a 20-point game against McNeese last year. 21 against the Colonels tonight. Powell, wing to the left, bounce to the left lane, fade away for Sadler, he sinks it, Powell on the assist, and the 21-0 run is over for UL. 73-64, to Cajuns with the lead. Baseball pass to midcourt, and Sadler runs right into Bartley. Foul on the Colonels, free throws for the Cajuns. Frank Bartley had to baseball catch it. Had to look up and almost call for that fair catch, but Roddy Peters was dead set on the steal. Peters now has three fouls, and Bartley 
The last one and one before double bonus time for UL and Bartley connects on the free throw. He's been struggling with his shot over the last few games, but making the most of his free throw opportunities. He's now 24 of his last 29 from the line, make it 25 for 30, and that's all over the last four games. Makes them both, and it's a 75-64 lead for the Raging Cajuns. Sequavian Smith jump pass to the point for Javon Powell. Step to the left, now cross court to the wing. Peters is open, right wing three off left. And Bartley tracks down a deep left corner rebound for the Raging Cajuns. And now they are owning the glass. Peters gambles on the steal. That sets up Russell. Left corner three, and he bears it. Cedric Russell. He was three for his last 17 on threes. Makes this one 78 to 64 Cajuns. Peters right lane attack. The Smith open right corner three. Zaquavian Smith hits it. 78 to 67 Cajuns. Five straight for the Colonels following the 21-0 run for Louisiana. Trouble in the backcourt for the Cajuns. They'll patiently approach and run into a trap. Stolen by Sadler. Saves it to the left wing where Zaquavian Smith will wait for some reinforcements. Cross court right wing. Peters all alone. Tries the three. Air ball. Left block rebound for Jonathan Stove. Baseball pass to Gant, who lays it home. Jakeen and Gant pointing out Jonathan Stove. 70-foot lead pass, 80 to 67 Cajuns. Sadler wing right, heads into traffic, steps back from 15, won't shoot, passes to Powell, left corner, pull up from 14 feet, off left, clanks it, and allows Gant to get the rebound on the left block. Cajuns are now plus 13 on the glass. And still running up and down the floor, finding Miller for an easy left block layup, plus one, foul on the Cajuns. And disaster arriving for the Colonels. Nichols had a 62 to 52 lead, a 30 to five run for the University of Louisiana. And three fouls on Tavon Sadler with the under eight minute media timeout. Cajuns 82, Colonels 67. 7.44 to play from Thibodeau on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Eighty-two to sixty-seven, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns with a fifteen-point lead and seven forty-eight to play. Two-three zone and renewed confidence on the offensive end of things for Louisiana. It's changed the whole complexion of this game. Once the Colonels were in control to finish the first half, they carried it over into the second half, built the lead up to ten. Now Justin Miller, after a layup in the lane on the previous possession, he drew the foul against Sadler. His free throw attempt rattles in and out. He's stuck on eight points, and Sadler has the rebound for Nichols. Quick dribbling to the left lane, runs into Russell, foul called, but they wipe off the shot. Sadler banked it home, no continuation given to him, but he'll get free throws. 7.42 on the clock, 15-point deficit for the Colonels. You have to feel like Nichols has one more big run left in him. Following the 30 to five run for Louisiana. You just cannot allow this game to get out of control and replicate the deficit and defeat from last year. Sadler, free throw attempt long. Left lane rebound Bartley and Louisiana after a 27 rebounding performance in the first half, already 18 in the second half. They have 44 in the game, Colonels have 32. Miller somehow finds Gant, who's fouled on the right block. Won't get the roll, but that's the fourth foul on Tavon Sadler. 
and you continue to stop and start not only the game, but the style of play for the Colonels. These whistles, these fouls, it's been such a, a benefit for Louisiana. And Jakina Gant will make the first free throw attempt. Gant, before the release, whistle and a foul against Nichols? No. Push in the back on Justin Miller, and we'll play the free throw game. Dead ball foul. Colonel's head of the line. 83 to 67 Cajuns. But we stop the clock. Couple fouls now on Miller. Free throws for Nichols. Javon Powell's Equavian Smith, Kimani Jackson, Tavon Sadler, Kevin Johnson for the Colonels. Peters is ready to check in for Nichols. Bartley, Russell, Malik Marchetti, Jakini Gant. Justin Miller for the UL Raging Cajuns. Sadler's free throw, it stays home. Rattled around a bit, but he's six for 10 from the line. 19 points, six rebounds and an assist. Tavon Sadler has scored at least 15 points in seven of his first eight games in his Colonel career, and he'll make both free throws. 83 to 69, Louisiana. With 7.27 on the clock, Point of no return for the Colonels. They have to force a couple turnovers and answer with their offense. Midcourt inbound to Gant. Quick give to the right sideline for an easy Bartley layup. Kamani Jackson overplay. Jackson scores at 85 to 69 Cajuns. Sequavian Smith, quick trigger right corner three short. Right block rebound, Justin Miller. No offensive rebounds allowed. Miller at midcourt was ready for the trap and located Russell. Extended minutes at the point for Russell tonight. He's played poorly in six or seven games, but has been strong tonight. Miller, a great give to Gant, who scores it, and he's fouled again. How many and one buckets can you have in one half? Defense deteriorating for Nichols. And credit Bob Marlin, he went to the zone. You know, it wasn't something that he enthusiastically did, but that took the air out of the Colonel's offense. And with Louisiana now leading 87 to 69. You'll get a free throw for Jakeen and Gant. He's coming off of a 16 point game. And now he's up to 14. 15 points, six rebounds and an assist per night for Gant in his first year in Lafayette, 88 to 69 Cajuns. Two three zone. Johnson throws it away. Midcourt steal. Russell with only Powell to beat, but Powell somehow swipes it. Great steal for Javon Powell. And a find to an open to Quavian Smith, but he was pulled on the pass. Can't shoot the right corner. Three, and the Colonels throw it away. Top of the key pass to the left sideline. Kevin Johnson did not have the accuracy he needed, and Powell couldn't reach down to pick it up. 19-point deficit for Nichols. 6.32 to play. Regis, Peters, Powell, Smith, and Sadler trying to slow the tide and get this ball game back in a, a position where at least Nichols can rally in the last few minutes. 6.26 to play. Has to start now, but Marchetti pulls up from the left wing, leaves it long, and beating everybody to the boards is Gant. He's fouled. Jakina Gant had Roddy Peters right next to him and just stepped around him. 6.21 on the clock. And four fouls on Roddy Peters. Jakeen and Gant had a four for 10 game in the opener. And since then, has been really number one in the country in field goal percentage. If you look at the full body of work, he'll make the free throws up to 15 points in the game. Gant. 70 plus percent from the floor since the opener. He's 45 for 65 over the last seven games. Makes both free throws. 90 to 69 Cajuns. Colonels blow the dunk on the left block. Daniel Regis misses it. He's fouled from behind and with four Louisiana Cajuns surrounding him, credit Regis to stick with the effort. Came down with the ball and powered back up. Two free throws for Daniel Regis. Colonels will have a long break after Sunday's game against Idaho. But two 
big time test this weekend against emerging mid-major powers. UL tonight, Idaho on Sunday. And with Regis missing the free throw and a right block rebound for Miller. It's UL ball, six minutes to play, 90 to 69 Cajuns. Cheerleaders trying to get a defense chant going, but Zaquavian Smith elects to foul instead. Reach in left sideline, free throws for Malik Marchetti. Have to be impressed with these high major transfers for Louisiana. Didn't get a chance to see Marcus Stroman tonight, but the point guard has been averaging six assists per game for UL. Played a lot of minutes for Frank Martin at South Carolina. First free throw short and off the right for Malik Marchetti. Marchetti spent a couple years playing for Andy Enfield, and USC had a great team this sophomore season, but he, he just wasn't producing like he wanted to. Transferred to UL, and he's had two of the best games of his college career in quick succession. Second free throw, it falls home. And that is a 13-point game for Marchetti and a 91-69 lead for the Raging Cajuns. Rutledge wing right, touch pass right elbow. Sadler heads into the hoop, and an offensive foul is called before his finish, and that'll do it for Tavon Sadler. His fifth foul, and it's on the heels of his best offensive performance of the season with Nichols. 20 points, 7-11 from the free throw line, six rebounds, a couple steals. But he exits, and the 22-point deficit certainly feels insurmountable with 5.45 to play, and now your number two score on the season, your number one score tonight. He takes a seat at the end of the bench. Javon Powell, Lafayette Rutledge, Sequavian Smith, Roddy Peters, and Daniel Regis in the game for the Colonels. You have point guard, point guard, off guard, off guard. You have three players under six feet in the game for Nichols. What's going through Justin Miller's mind right now? 6'7", 250-pounder on the inbound. He shows off that left arm, powers it down the floor, and a reach-in before another alley-oop for UL. They have scripted their second-half success perfectly. We're just going to throw it over the top of this full-court press, maybe make one more pass, and then we're going to dunk on you every time down the floor. UL is 17 for 22 shooting in the second half. Bartley missed a free throw. Forty-eight free throw attempts for Lafayette tonight. Bartley one for two. He's up to 19 points, five boards, three assists in the game. 92 to 69 Cajuns. Powell in the front court for the Colonels. Still for Jim starting to empty out a bit. Peters to the right block, jump pass left wing. Smith won't pull the trigger on the three. Behind his back, closer to midcourt. Wing left, now cross court to Peters. Bartley daring him to shoot, but Peters attacks, shoots over Miller. Offensive foul. Turnover for the Colonels with 5.22 to play. Have to admire this team that Bob Marlin has built. Brought in Alfred Payton. He's had a rebirth in Orlando this year. Great season with the Magic. Jay Wright, he's playing the G League, had over 1,100 points in his career. It's one of the reasons why Marcus Stroman transferred here. They know how to develop guards. Cajun ball, they're on top by 23. Miller straight away, looks off to the left arc, finds Jakina Grant. Back to the high post right. Miller against Rutledge. Late double team, kick to Bartley. Great pump fake, tries the hoop, but it's tipped away by Regis. Steal for the Colonels. Powell in the paint, high floater, no, but he's fouled. Daniel Regis, a pogo pop. He hopped up and ensured that the fourth alley-oop dunk of the game would not be recorded. Have to make the most of your minutes, Daniel Regis playing about 11 minutes per game, but with Sadler fouling out, Colonel's in foul trouble, he should get to end the game on the floor. Powell makes the free throw. He's got six points, four rebounds, and five steals. Only one of seven shooting for Javon. But he'll make both free throw attempts and 
you know that he will be a key contributor throughout this season. Led the Southland Conference in assists last year. Colonels trail 92 to 71. Still fouled in the left lane. Free throws for UL. Daniel Regis will pick up his second. UL has opened up this game by opening up their spacing. And they had such issues in traffic in the first half. They had nine first half turnovers. They have 10 in the second half, but they're different. Offense has been so efficient. And another made free throw by Stowe. He's 10 for 11 at the line. Cajuns up 22. UL is 14 for 18 from the floor in the second half, 18 for 22 from the line. Jonathan Stove continuing to rack up new career highs with every added point from the free throw line. He makes them both, 23 points for Stove, 94 to 71 Cajuns. Colonels will take a quick left arc three. Smith misses it. Left corner rebound. Johnson double pump on the baseline. He can't get the roll. Misses a shot short. And Miller stakes his claim to another rebound. And he'll outlet it 50 feet down the floor. Gant left corner to the left wing to Miller. And now you all will finally pull back a bit. They've got the 23-point lead. Marchetti left arc and a high low from Miller to Gant. It's off the rim on the feed. Taken away by Powell. His sixth steal. He finds Rutledge, pull up right arc three, air ball. And it's out of bounds off of UL. Lafayette Rutledge, he had 10 three-pointers a week ago in Baltimore. Never seen anything like it. 30 points on 10 made threes. But he is one for five from beyond the arc tonight. UL outscoring the Colonels 50 to 23 in the second half. Left baseline inbound for Powell. Inbound mid-court goes to Kevin Johnson. Pick set by Raji Lyons, who just re-entered. Against the 2-3 zone, Colonel still trying to figure out a way to attack Johnson. He'll just shoot a deep top of the key three, miss it off the back rim. Easy rebound in the paint for Stove, and Smith is still down. Five on four. Stove to Gant, right block layup. And an injury timeout with the Cajuns up by 25. Jakeen and Gant. And Jonathan Stove teaming up together. 15 made field goals in 19 attempts in the second half for Louisiana. 23 for Stove. He's up to 25 now after that bucket. 18 for Gant, 19 for Bartlett, 13 for Marchetti. Washington has a double-double with 10 and 12. And the Colonels still wondering what happened after that under 16-minute media timeout. Nichols had a 62 to 52 advantage before the media timeout. All Colonels in the last 12 minutes. 3.44 on the clock, Louisiana with a 96 to 71 lead on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Locally owned and operated in Thibodeau, Divinity. Call 1-800-356-6831 to book your charter today. 96 to 74, Louisiana, following Javon Powell's second three of the ninth. Colonels get their third three of the second half. Nichols is only seven of 31 from the floor. But Powell is now in double figures, and the Colonels will send Stevie Repahowski into the game. Cajuns have a left corner. Stove leaves his feet, finds Bartley straight away. Back to Marchetti, left arc. Short corner feed for a left baseline jumper. It's missed by Stove, but a foul on the floor, and it goes against Nichols. Lafayette Rutledge on the hold, and more free throws for the Raging Cajuns. We have 84 combined free throws this evening. Justin Miller, two more. He's attempted nine this evening. He's only made four. 
surprising. He is a great free throw shooter, and he makes this one. Came in 82% on the season. After scoring 18 points against Nichols last year, he's up to 11 to go along with six rebounds. Makes both free throws. 98 points for the Cajuns. They're up by 24. Powell, quick feed into the interior where Lyons almost walks, finds Repahowski, whose left wing three is blocked by Gant. Repahowski gets it back, goes baseline, and reverses for the layup. Stevie Repahowski, he pulls the Colonels to within 22, 98 to 76 Cajuns. Colonels will show their 1 3 1 zone. Bartley all alone, right corner three, back rims it, left block, rebound Marchetti. Nobody puts a body on him. He had a layup, but just take some time off the clock at this stage in the game. Marchetti loops the pass back to the point. Great give from Stove. The middle for the oop. Jakeen and Gant, he teams up for the throwdown. Miller on the assist, 100 to 76, Louisiana. Gant has 20 points, new career high. Javon Powell, step back top of the key three, makes it. Two straight threes for Powell, 100 to 79, Cajuns. And Stove telling Bob Marlin, I need a break, coach. Career high for Stove and at the next dead ball. Look at the spin, the final two minutes on the bench. Gant back to the basket at the left lane. Back door to Miller who burns Rapahowski, scores it and draws the foul. Every single Raging Cajun in the game is in double figures. Justin Miller will get one more free throw as Bartley and Stove receive a nice round of applause from the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajun fans that made the tripper. Might live in Lafouche or Terrebonne Parishes. Second free throw. It's off the back rim by Miller. Repahowski has the rebound. Cajuns with a 23-point lead as Powell finds Repahowski. Step back right wing three. It's off the left of the rim. Left block rebound, Jakeen and Gant. 20 points, eight rebounds, five blocks for Jakeen and Gant. 90 seconds on the clock, Cajuns up 23. Gant has at least three blocks in four games this season. He's been active in the inside. Fox at five. Malik Marchetti steps back, shoots a three over Repahowski, leaves it long to the right. Miller takes away another rebound from the Colonels, dribbles it out into the left corner. Powell pokes it free, and it lands in the lap of a couple Cajuns at the end of the bench, but Louisiana has the ball with a minute to play. And Jakeen and Gant, his night will conclude as he takes a break with exactly 60 seconds to play. Mason O'Quan is in for Louisiana. Jacob Broussard will also make his first appearance of the game. P.J. Hardy. First time we've seen Hardy in half number two. He went off against the Colonels last year at 12 points in 15 minutes. With Louisiana leading it 102 to 79. Shot clock down to seven. Jerikas Davis shooting a three over Lyons and sinking it. 105-79, icing on the cake. First field goal of the night for Davis. Rutledge pulls the trigger, left wing three, back rims it. Lyons has the rebound, draws the foul. Raji Lyons continuing to produce for the Colonels. First time we've seen the true freshman in extended minutes this evening and a lot to like. Four points, four rebounds. It's played under 10 minutes. Raiji short arms the first free throw attempt and misses it. Cajuns have attempted 14 more free throws in the second half than Nichols has. Colonels came in plus 70% on the season from the free throw line. 22. 34 tonight, and Lions goes 0 for 2. Davis has the rebound, and that's your game. 105-79, Cajuns, 20 seconds to play. How about one more three? It's long by Davis. Left block rebound for Javon Powell, and the Colonels will get one more opportunity. 
Thought UL was ready to run out the clock. Not yet. Repahowski all alone. Left corner three. He's 0 for 3. Misses that one. But Lions has the board and is fouled with 3.3 seconds to play. How many possessions can we get in in three seconds? That, like, what, four? Maybe five. Fifty-four free throw attempts for Louisiana, 35 for the Colonels. Raji's missed three in a row. This is this one. Cajuns 18 for 26, shooting in the second half, 53% of the game. Colonels 34% from the floor tonight as Lions makes the second. 105 to 80 is our final. And Louisiana has three straight wins. And they run away with it in the final 16 minutes. Colonels had a 62 to 52 lead. 53 to 18 is the run to end the game. Cajun six and two on the season. And it's all Louisiana moving forward for the Raging Cajuns. Loyola, New Orleans, Louisiana Tech, UNO, Southeastern. Big stretch approaching for the Cajuns as the Colonels turn their attention to Idaho on Sunday. Vandals making their first trip ever to South Louisiana to take on Nichols. That'll be a 6 p.m. tip on Sunday. Post-game show and our wrap-up and recap from Stouffer Gymnasium, Cajuns 105, Colonels 80. This is Nichols Basketball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Hello. to 80 final, all Louisiana in half number two. 62-52, Colonels were up at the under 16 media timeout. Bob Marlin went to his own. Pace of play slowed down for the Colonels. And all of a sudden, the rebounding advantage, the, the size advantage that Louisiana was hoping to rely on, it paid off. Colonels were minus 14 on the glass tonight. 55 to 41 was the advantage for Louisiana, but they out-rebound the Colonels 28 to 18 in the second half. 14 assists to the Colonels, four in the second half. Nichols was able to force 20 turnovers. Colonels only turned it over 10 times, but a lot of those missed shots, they felt like turnovers. Open looks, something Nichols has done such a great job taking advantage of this year. If you give Lafayette, Rutledge, or Powell, or really anybody an open look, all season long, even in losses, we've seen the Colonels rack up some big shooting performances when teams sleep on their scores. But a different story this evening as Nichols could not take advantage of some early opportunities in this game. And Louisiana ends up getting six players in double figures. And it was all night. 23 from Stove, 20 from Gant, 19 for Bartley, 13 for Marchetti, 12 for Miller, 10 for Washington. Career high for Stove, career high for Gant. Marchetti finished with 13, but he had eight straight in one sequence in this game. And then you look back at the 21-0 run, it started innocently enough. Colonels picked up a foul, two free throws for Stove, made them. Next possession, forced a turnover. Stove picks up the, the, a foul, trying to attempt a shot. He gets two more free throws, makes them. Four straight from the free throw line for Stove. Colonels give it back to UL. Bartley comes down, hits a three. They get another stop. Then Bartley scores on an and one finish, and now it was tied at 62. 
Louisiana never looked back. They get the double-double from Marchetti, career-high 11 rebounds for him. He had five Cajuns with a multitude of assists. Five guys with two to seven assists. Stove, 23 points, seven assists, six rebounds, 11 to 12 from the free throw line. And all of this is without Marcus Stroman. And the Louisiana point guard, certainly not losing minutes to anybody, but doesn't this change the way you look at your team if you're Bob Marlin? That you can put Marchetti and Stove in kind of a point forward role Marchetti 6'6", six, six, Stove is 6'4". You can use their reach and size and ball handling, and you can still pick up a big road win. Colonels were led by Tavon Sadler's 20 points. He had six rebounds before fouling out the final minutes of the game. Roddy Peters fouled out with 17 points, four rebounds and an assist. He also had a lot of steals. Powell had five steals, Peters had four. Colonels have 14 steals in the game, but they were nine for 37 shooting in the second half. Colonels finish 25 for 74 in the game. Season worst, 34% shooting performance. Seven of 29 on threes. Repahowski missed all three of his three threes. Rutledge and Smith, they go two for 13, two of 12 on threes. Kevin Johnson was two for eight from the floor. Powell finished three for nine after making his last two shots, his last two threes of the game. Impressive win for Louisiana as they get set to host Loyola of New Orleans, road game at La Tech, a couple Southland Conference games awaiting them to close out the middle portion of December with games against UNO and Southeastern. Louisiana improves to six and two on the year, and they've won three straight. Colonels fall to four and four on the season. Big opportunity to bounce back against a real strong squad out of the big sky, the Idaho Vandals. They'll be in Stouffer Gym Sunday night. Check us out at 6 p.m. on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Video broadcast also available on ESPN1003.com. Pre-game show will start at 5.50. Idaho and Nichols Sunday night in South Louisiana. And that'll be the last game for the Colonels until December 16th. They have finals coming up. Long break. Colonels trying to make the most of it before an extended delay before our next Colonel basketball game against Culver Stockton University in the big matchup in New Orleans against Tulane on December 18th. One more home game against Mobile on December 20th and it's off to the Pacific Northwest Emerald City game at Seattle University and then it's conference Northwestern State on December 28th. Final score from Thibodeau, Louisiana 105, Nichols 80. We'll do it again on Sunday on your home for Colonel Basketball, ESPN Radio New Orleans.